Hello, everybody, and welcome to the award-winning In Wheel Time Car Talk Show, your weekly go-to all things automotive place. Coming up in this segment, Mr. Jeffrey Zekin has our pre-owned car of the week, the 2017 Toyota Camry. You'll find out uh, about the average retail price along with some of the options available that particular year if you're looking for a good used car. Uh, we'll have a preview of some of the area events as well as a few of this week's automotive news headlines. And we invite you to stay tuned for that. Two and a half hour show all the way till 12 noon central time. We invite you to stay tuned. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world Mars right there. King Conrad DeLong here. Don Armstrong here. Jeffrey Zekin will be with us momentarily. He's sitting uh, off stage and he will be joining us as he always does in all of his glory. Perfect. But right now we have with us... Uh, one of my favorite guys, I mean, I, I've known him not that long, I don't know, Randy wrote about five years or so. Uh, Randy Borcheting uh, owns a place with his wife called Paint House here in the Houston area, just up to the northwest side. And uh, he does custom cars, and he is known for his paint. As a matter of fact, uh, paint houses all over the United States get Randy to mix certain colors, special colors for them to paint on their cars. He's a colorful guy. He is a colorful guy. And uh, a very pleasant good morning to you, Mr. Borcherding. Howdy, fellas. Thanks for having me again. Hey, thank you. It's always good to talk to you. And uh, today we're going to talk to you about SEMA. Did they even have a SEMA show this year? Uh, virtually online, but not at a location. No. So in other words, it sucked because, it, because that, I mean, that is a, an event that the whole world goes to uh, in Las Vegas, and it usually happens the week right after the NHRA race. And uh, everybody that is anybody in the automotive field goes to SEMA to see the well, new cars. goes or shows, you know, because right. everybody brings a display. And, you know, that how many – usually there's five or six venues they fill up with SEMA, Randy? Oh, so yeah, yeah, it's – it's something you can't recreate online. The energy that place has and, and just seeing it all in person. I know they did their best, but I hope they can put it together next year and maybe they'll have the convention center's construction done. Are they so working they, on that? Are they making, they have, don't don't tell me they're making it bigger. Oh, they are, yeah. Across the street, they're at, they took down one of the hotels and they're adding more space. So wow. um, hopefully they'll have time to get it all done. We'll see. All right, well. So let's talk about uh, your presentation out there. Uh, uh, congratulations, because uh, one of your cars made it into the top 12, I understand. It did. We were uh, surprised and, and honored to be pulled into that level of the competition. And uh, But this year they held it in L.A. In a, in a really cool old brick warehouse. So they found an interesting backdrop, and, and they filmed their TV show, which is, I'm sure, a very important part of their marketing efforts to keep all of the energy alive to carry us through to next year. So how, let's get, start from the beginning. First of all, you have to submit an entry to be, to get drilled down to these top 12. How many people apply uh, to uh, actually show their car and get into uh, competition with each other? I don't know the official number. I think it was somewhere between 350 and 400 entries that they narrow down initially to a top 40 which would be four categories, top 10 in each. And we were told uh, that we had made that. And then, as you said earlier about your helicopter and don't say it because you'll wake up the universe. Well, <laughs> yeah, right, that's right. Yeah. The, the universe woke up and, and all of a sudden we had brakes that were locking up and we got down to the truck was coming to get the vehicle. They, they trucked the, once you made the 12, I'm sorry, I'm skipping ahead. Once you were informed you made the 12, they had to tell you ahead of time, even though they film it differently. Um, they sent trucks, you know, pilot transport to pick all the vehicles up and get them out to L.A. and then flew us out to be part of this TV filming. Well, we had a car the day before that was I couldn't drive it a quarter mile and all of a sudden the brakes locked up. Nice. I, Yikes. I don't know why. So Jen had to drive to Dallas from Houston and back to go to ATEC, which is Summit's wholesale division, pick up master cylinder, Booster. two front calipers, all the pieces for the front. We just replaced everything. Because you didn't know what was what. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had no time to figure it out. And fortunately, we did the all-nighter. We got it up and running, test drove it around at 4 in the morning in the neighborhood. 
and had my one of my guys following me with my truck and trailer just in case it happened again. <laughs> so we looked like we were stealing cars in the neighborhood, I think. <laughs> and uh, then the truck showed up the next morning and off it went. So it was, as always, down to the wire no matter what. So what kind of car is this? Uh, I guess it's not one. It's a Ranchero. So uh, is it a car? Is it a truck? I think it's a truck. It has a bed. They put me in the truck category. Okay. 71 Ranchero. I'm sorry. Yeah, 71. Se- 71 Ranchero. And it's what not, uh, not what kind of what, what kind of paint house color does it have on it? It has what we call dark maroon pearl. It's kind of a burgundy pearlescent tone. Yeah. The the picture you see behind me as I see it in the camera on my computer, that's about what it looks like. Very okay. nice. Very nice. And so you made it to the top 12, and uh, I assume at the top 12 level, the competition is really stiff. Oh, it is. Yeah, you get there and you wonder, I'm, I, don't, I think I may have outkicked my coverage on this one. I don't necessarily, I don't think I belong in this room, but here we are, and, and you got to just ride it out. And fortunately, in this contest, it's judged by the builders. So the 12 of us judge each other, which makes it really pure, really true to what it should be and and i feel like the best four made the top four and the best one won the event well who can you can you divulge that information oh yeah yeah it was announced yesterday the at the ultimate winner of battle of the builders 2020 was a uh, 63 i think it is black two-door impala station wagon that won the riddler this year pretty so high it cotton was, if it won the riddler yeah, as well phenomenal phenomenal car now had that builder um built other let's say Riddler cars, Millwinder cars, or SEMA cars before? And no, no, the they, same... uh, they snuck into Detroit and surprised everybody. Wow. Did They've you know this guy? It. No, I met him this weekend for the first time. It's him, his brother, and his dad, and they all built it together. Oh, how so cool is that? Fan, how cool? Do they, own, do, do they own a professional them, shop, Randy? Uh, I think they do. I hate to say, I'm not, I didn't get to know him really well. Um, Yes, I think the answer is yes. But it took him nine and a half years, and he said he had at least 26,000 hours in that car. Oh, Yikes. my gosh. But there's other pretty famous builders that were in the top 12 with you. One of them, everybody yeah. knows, Chip Foose. Yeah, absolutely. His his little frosty green XKE Jaguar was just so beautiful. It was, put it this way, it was sex on wheels. Just a gorgeous car. Wow, that is so a, you as a, a gorgeous judge, car by itself. Yeah. You as a judge got to go over that car with a fine tooth comb, then, right? Absolutely, and it it did not it did not fail to impress. Yeah. So when you do that as a judge, because this is your second year, because you won best truck last year, correct? Yes. So at, when you get a chance to do that and look at this level of car, do you pick up things that you want to incorporate in your next car? Oh, sure. Uh, absolutely. It's all about learning new tricks. And uh, the one thing I enjoy about this show and shows like this, like the good guys shows, it's more about what's right with the vehicle, not about what's wrong with the vehicle. So what I'm looking for is, yeah, OK, you're looking for the flaws. We all have them. We all have our little secrets in our cars. But I want to learn how did he do that? Or when he tells when he gets to tell us his story about the car, as as we do, you learn what he did to create that shape or that molding or that effect that you didn't realize wasn't ever in that car. And that's true of all 11 of the other candidates. They're just super talented guys, a very diverse group of vehicles they put into this competition. So let's go back to the, 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 the truck, the Ranchero. Uh, obviously, that's a customer of yours? Yes, they're in uh, Monterey, Tennessee. And we we adopted the project in its early stages from another shop that uh, just wasn't able to get it where they wanted it. So we went and picked it up in Alabama, brought it back to our shop two and a half years ago, probably. Oh my gosh. And went from basically some somebody work and primer and took it all the way to the finish line. Wow, well, uh, I can't wait to see it. Are there pictures available somewhere we can go look at it? Uh, you could probably find them on our Instagram page, uh, Paint House Texas, Facebook. Um, I haven't posted a lot because I didn't want 
sort of let the secret out until we knew what was going to happen at this contest. Yeah. So we'll start putting more pictures up. Yeah. Do, apparently, Don doesn't look at our Facebook page because I have <laughs> shared what you guys post. Actually, I shared your post off your Facebook page to ours that kind of shows the the top of the car and then a collection of like four or five pictures on the on the right side of the picture. Stunningly. Why would he? Why, why would he look? He's busy stealing license plates. Apparently. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. I was out last night till the wee hours of the morning. You know, you know those they, 1962 plates are rare. I'm telling you. Hard to find. <laughs> so what powertrain do you have in the Ranchero? We, we kept it traditional. It's a 351 Cleveland. Uh, we do have fuel injection on it. Uh, it's got the AOD Ford overdrive transmission. It's, it's powerful, but not too powerful. Very drivable. But it looks right in the car. It's not the modern engines with the engine covers and... Yeah. Coil it didn't look out of place. Air. It looks period correct. It looks it like it correct. You know that that's always one of our goals is not to ruin what's right about these these vehicles we build, and in this case, holding on to sort of a heritage era engine, it was the right thing to do. It looks good in there. Randy, what do you got in the shop right now? What's your next project that's uh, getting ready to go out the door? Oh, we've we've got a '67 Firebird it belongs to a local uh, customer friend. It's going to upholstery. Behind it's a 70 Cougar convertible that's almost ready for upholstery. Uh, beyond that, a, a 65 El Camino and a 55 Chevy, both on Art Morrison chassis with the modern LT4 supercharged uh, and eight-speed uh, Chevrolet drivetrains, LT, LT4 and, and the eight-speed automatic. Where's, so the very current, where's the Corvette? The 63? We have a 60, the 63, the, the Randy Apple red one. Yeah. It has gone back to the builder. Uh, Billy Dawson in Seguin Corvette Corrections is building that car. Uh, we did the body and paint on it. We do have a 64 Corvette Roadster in the shop that we're doing a kind of a mild upgrade, bolt on suspension parts, a LS3, five speed. Just keep it vintage, but drivable. So tuning up the drivetrain and keeping the, sort of the patina everywhere else. So when would be the good time to talk to you next uh, about uh, what's coming out of the shop? We'll just go ahead and um, ma make that date right now. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to write January? it January? Probably, yeah. Yeah. All right. When will I mean, Battle this, of the Builders be on? I, I don't actually know. They didn't tell us the debut. I think last year it came out in January sometime. Yeah, I think it was I the recall. 19th of January when it was on last time. How, yeah. do you, how, do you, yeah. how the hell do you remember the 19th? Because I of... filmed it. I taped it. I, I had to set my my uh, well, no, my DVD. The, the, the fact of the matter is, it's the nineteenth of January. I have no clue I was even alive on the face of this earth on the nineteenth of last January. <laughs> and you remember that great date? You got to be kidding. Because uh, I follow, I followed it. I wanted to find out he, when the show was on. I, yeah, I, I he, thought it was and he don't get out much. He doesn't get out much apparently. <laughs> Randy, Randy, Randy does get out a lot. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning. Tell Jen we said hello and give her our best. And congratulations to the top. 12 uh, finish for you this year at SEMA. It's always great to talk to you, Randy. We love you, man. Thanks, guys. Take care. You do the same. Randy Borcheting, Paint House, locally. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's time now for uh, us to swap seats because we're not doing a commercial break here. And I know that these guys, uh, Mr. Morris and Mr. Zekin, uh, are always on top of it and ready to make changes on a whim, just on a fly. And that's imagine. why you're chatting long enough so that they can swap seats and Jeff can do his review. Would you rather me just shut up? and? Uh, no, no, no. I, I think I there's don't something mind. wrong with dead air, isn't there? You, you're the broadcast hero here. I'm not, I'm not a hero. I'm not anything. You're the broadcast Hall of Famer. Why you keep bringing that up? Does that, is that impressive I wanna, to I you? Yeah, very impressive. I want to hang on your coattails and see you're if you're so full of crap. <laughs> I, what is he talking about? He knows me. He knows all this stuff. Put that headset on. Get ready. You ready? Now, Jeff's ready. Here. But I do want to say one thing. You mentioned earlier when you were doing my car review that you know it's a, <laughs> you said that car is in a sweet spot. I am the sweet spot. So, oh my gosh. just to let you know. Yes, you are, Jeff. <laughs> and I just want to just validate that right now. It is validated. Thank with you. Both of my uh, followers. <laughs> Kathy. Yeah. Kathy and, and Susie. Kylie. And Kylie. Yeah, That's it, the granddaughter. Uh, okay. Time now for this hour's pre-owned car of the week. And joining us is Targ. 
Qatar. <laughs> Car guru, tire man, <laughs> Jeff Zekin, and uh, he is also behind all the video stuff that you see, that you don't see going on behind the scenes, but he's the one over there punching the button. So Jeff has got the 2017 Camry. Toyota Camry. Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, and there are three uh, trim levels in this vehicle. There are the, uh, there's the SE, the LE, and the XLE. So we've kind of whittled it down to those three. Today's review is going to be the uh, SE. The SE is a four-door midsize. I'm calling it midsize. You might think it's mm, This is smaller. the entry level. Correct. Yeah. So, you know, you got a four-door. Oh, gosh. This would be the, uh, it's a shared chassis with the ES350. Correct. Correct. Now, the, like I said, getting back to the front grill, uh, styling of it, you can get a rear spoiler, the fog lamps, the grill inserts. Now, the grill inserts Mars on went this, too far with that's the okay. picture. And, uh, we'll, we'll come back to it. It's, there's going to be more. Um, the, the grill insert styling, you have changes of that. You've got, you know, the honeycomb style, the straight style of the grill. Uh, you have nine color options. And, of course, we just had Randy uh, earlier, just a segment ago. And he could give you any color you wanted. Exactly. If you wanted. I was just about to say that. He could paint it any color you wanted. And this is a 2017, so take it to him. Uh, alloy <laughs> wheels, you got 16-inch and 17-inch. you got steel wheels, so there's a variety there. of the 16s and 17s. I did mention it's Lexus-esque. I like that. Um, and moving on in the picture, now I like that shot there. You've got the rear spoiler built in on the deck lid. You've got the alloy wheels there, and of course you can get uh, dual exhaust. Now these do come uh, with, with engine modifications, and we'll get into that here in just a little bit. So, um, so far as the interior, uh, you've got the rear camera set up. You've got heated mirrors. You've got the six to eight speaker okay. JBL system. Uh, the eight speakers you can get on the LE and the XLE, but on the SE, you got basic six speakers. Cloth interior, eight-way seats are optional. Uh, and, of course, they do come standard with the XLE. Speed-sensitive radio. Now, I have this in my Cadillac, which is cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever have that. Yep. The faster you drive, the louder it gets. And, of course, when you slow down, the sound diminishes for your passengers. Cool Mo little feature. Most cars have that. These well, days. I, I think it's a cool option. I really do. And you have to set it, which is In some cool. of the cars, you can set the variance. Yes. L you know, Low, louder, medium, quieter. and high. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Always high. He's unimpressed. Always high. Go ahead. So the interior there, there's a good shot of that, and I like the bolsters on that seat. Uh, you've got the nice, thick, wrapped steering Racing wheel. Racing seats. They, they, they are. They're, they look very they, they look very racy. So... <laughs> There's not many options on the inside. You can get the leather and, of course, the cloth and, of course, the inserts on that as well. And then moving on to the back, you can you can see that the, the seats in the back, I don't know why manufacturers do this, but they're always upright. They're always like you're, you're, you're sitting on a board, in my opinion. So there you go. There's a shot of that. And, and it, there's not a lot of back uh, foam in it, in my opinion. So it's just for the kids. You're not going to put very many adults back there. Yeah, I mean, but occasionally you do. I mean, you put the mother-in-law or the, the the grandkids or whatever versus vice versa. People you hate. <laughs> Put them back there. We could do that as well. <laughs> Said by the man who's been married three times. <laughs> exactly. Now, on the engine, like we talked about earlier, it's a 2.5 uh, four-cylinder. It's 178 horsepower uh, at 6,000 RPM. Uh, double overhead cam, and there's a picture of it. Now, that's the four-cylinder. Um, I'm not sure if I put a shot of the six-cylinder in it, which... which It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't difference. make any difference. No. 170 foot-pounds of torque in uh, Conrad's Newton meters. It's a six-speed automatic transmission. Now, mileage rating, 25 miles per gallon in the city, 32 miles per gallon in the, on the highway. Average, about 27. Okay. You can get 27, which is good. In, in a year-make vehicle, that, that, that's pretty decent. That was, yeah. And uh, they probably made 300,000, 400,000 oh, of them that yeah, year. At least. Now, what I like about this, too, they'll run. Uh, you know, we talked Forever. about Forever. Exactly. But you got to maintain them. 
and I suggest always buying the extra maintenance package if you can. Uh, you can even get them on pre-owned vehicle, but it's certified pre-owned, the CPO vehicles, you can actually buy that additionally, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, moving on to the pricing, uh, we've got, as tested, this one is right around 23 to 24 in that range with about 60,000 miles, 62,000. So it holds its value well Absolutely. because that $23,000 for a used three-year-old vehicle is a lot. It's pretty stout. Right. And again, and again you're going to go into the 23s to 24s if it's maintained. You've got records and things which most dealerships do keep for you. Uh, the XLE, you're looking at a 26,000 plus plus wow. on that for the higher end of the, the uh, trim ratings. That's really holding its value. Right. So uh, I think that's impressive. Now, what the competitive or the, uh, the the other vehicles like are the Honda Accord, which you talked about earlier. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a Ford Fusion, which is more comparable to the XLE. And then, of course, you've got, um, say, like a Volkswagen or a Hyundai, the Hyundai Sonata that you're going to be reviewing, a, an older version of that would be comparable on that as well. Well, thank so, you, sir. You're welcome. That was good. You know what you're going to do next week? Yes, I do. Uh, Ferrari 308 GTB uh, GTS. So if there's one out there, let me know. Wow. He's going to do his Magnum imitation. <laughs> you know, because, you I know, we never really talk about uh, exotic cars, which <laughs> I would consider a, a Ferrari. So we don't know how much those are going. We know what they are for when they're new, you know. Two hundred thousand dollars. I'm only doing it if someone sends me. Uh, you know, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> no, I want you to do it. No, I'm not going to do that. Do it. <laughs> we, we we'd love to to hear it. All right. I'll do hey, that. we'd love to hear your questions or comments. Our email address is info at inwheeltime.com. We're going to uh, move on with our show now because it's time to take a look at what's left of racing for the season. Um, and there are a couple of races left. Uh, and uh, also. The fact that there are some cruise-ins coming up as well. Yeah. Well, one of the things I definitely want to do is give a shout-out to Erica Enders, double O, double E. She uh, won the Pro Stock World Championship uh, last weekend in Las Vegas, the she fourth time she was world champion. And I posted a uh, video that they finally got out this week uh, of uh, her trip out there to Las Vegas and the ultimate win and, and all of that. Pretty uh, cool. Pretty yeah, cool. on Facebook. So if you want to check that out after the show if after you don't the show. It. So Formula One is uh, this weekend, and they're having the Turkish Grand Prix in Istanbul, which I think is kind of an interesting place. To There's have a it. song in that somewhere. <laughs> I, I can't remember what something from the 40s. And or then 50s. on the 27th is going to be the uh, the Bahrain uh, Grand Grand Prix in Bahrain, and then the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in Abu Dhabi, and that's the that'll be the season ender. So they're really carrying the F1 season late. Usually F1's over by the first of November, and now. Now they're going to be almost. They're going to be all the way into December. Uh, tomorrow is Phoenix for NASCAR, and that is going to be their final event. The uh, the the point leader at the end of that. And there's only four drivers that are eligible for the final, and uh, be pretty interesting to have that in Phoenix. Phoenix is kind of an odd triangular shaped track that really makes it a little bit more difficult for them to drive because each of the corners is substantially different, and uh, that's. To a large degree, most of what's going on in racing, IMSA is going to have next weekend their finale at the 12 Hours of Sebring, which should have been back in March, but now they're going to have it in November. And our friend Alec Udell is going to be driving in that as well. And if you kind of follow us on Facebook, I, uh, Alec does a driver's perspective of the life of a Perform, uh, professional race car driver. Performer. And, uh, well, I, <laughs> and that's I, what you were going to say. I, it was what I was going to say. And he's and I post. Uh, I share a lot of his posts on there. If you get a chance to read them, it's it's a very analytical view of what it takes to drive at that level. Um, what it takes to manage the car, the tires, the the, the process. Uh, of driving as well as driving the car. So very very cool uh, series of. Uh, pieces he does that i've been sharing so tomorrow is a uh, kima car meet nifty 50s is tomorrow they're gonna have uh their their tomorrow tonight i'm sorry kima car meet is tonight <laughs> nifty 50s is tonight and randy's down to the last two shows he's gonna do of the year tonight being one of them and tonight is an all mustang night so they're really inviting a lot of the classic mustangs to come on out and and show 
And then you know, Mustang Sally will be there. Yes, she will. And then the blacklist. Did she shave her legs? That's the real question. Gosh. The Blacklist Multi-Club Meet is going to be in Rosenberg at 111 uh, Herndon Drive tonight at 6 p.m. Tomorrow is the Bayou City Cup Series Championship Show in Alvin at the Garage Bar. Uh, also tomorrow is the WM Luxury Car Gathering at 7800 Washington. And you want to go see some high-dollar iron, go to 7800 Washington tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. to 11. They're going to have a lot of real high-dollar iron there. And then again, Sunday night at Freddy's at 1960 in Eldridge. Later in the week is uh, Wednesday night at Freddy's and Katie. And then Freddy's Steak Burgers on Kirkendall and 2920 is every Friday night. Back to you, Don. Back to you, Don Armstrong. Come on down. Oh. Sorry, just had a little slip there. And then the, the big event is going to be Tailpipes and Tacos on the 21st. Yeah, don't forget and that. And you don't have to show a car. Just come on out and, and look at and the look cars at the that, cars. Are, that are going to be there. And we're going to be there uh, doing our show from 8 to 11, so be sure and stop by and say hello. Time now for some of the stories making automotive news this week. You ever heard of a guy by the name of Bob Brockman? Name rings a bell. Okay. Don't know why. Well, uh, Bob Brockman is a Houstonian. Okay, and uh, he is in a whole world of trouble for money laundering and tax evasion. Uh-oh. He, uh, he only, I don't know him. <laughs> you don't know him? Oh. I, I don't yeah, want him. We don't want to know him. Yeah, stay far away. All I could think of was Ken. Remember Ken Lay? Yeah. Ken Lay, the uh, CEO of Enron? This guy is kind of in that vein, uh, and uh, apparently he's got – some bad things going on for him. Here's the story this week. Swiss prosecutors for, froze more than one billion of his dollars held in bank accounts belonging to Houstonian Bob Brockman, who's been charged here in the U.S. for alleged tax evasion and money laundering. Reynolds and Reynolds Company announced yesterday oh, yeah. that That's Brockman stepped down as CEO and chairman of the dealer management system giant. Apparently, every car dealer in the United States and beyond owns this Reynolds and Reynolds system yeah. that manages all sorts of things that go on within a dealership, including sales. Any of the processing of stuff in a dealership, service department, repair orders, body shop, new, co new sales department stuff. Well, Bobby Boy was indicted in October by U.S. federal prosecutors for allegedly using a network of secret... Caribbean entities to evade taxes on $2 billion in investment income in what may be the largest prosecution of its kind in United States history. <laughs> oh, yeah, they used to be spaced up off of 290. I think they still are. Brockman is accused of using a Bermuda-based family charitable trust and other offshore entities to hide assets from the IRS while failing to pay taxes hiding on any of it. Hiding assets. He also uh, is charged with money laundering and other crimes. Uh, Reynolds & Reynolds provides management software that almost every car dealership in the U.S. uses. That's why we have kind of a, uh, the story. So they froze a billion dollars. I wonder how many other billions he has hidden somewhere else where it's really not going to affect him very Way much. Way to go, Bob, <laughs> moron. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, right. Probably help if you turn his mic on. He don't want to hear what I got to say today. <laughs> Volkswagen of America's Audi unit is recalling more than 94,000 vehicles in the U.S. because the C-pillar padding, ABC pillar, that's the one back at the back window, may not absorb enough impact in the event of a crash, increasing the uh, risk of head injury in passengers who are not wearing seat belts. Then stop so, smashing your head into it. <laughs> yeah, <and laughs> That's the, pretty the simple. The third button on your coat is missing. You know, and uh, it's only the coat that you wear maybe once a year. Really? And if, if you're not seat belted, don't oh, yeah. smash your head into the C pillar. Spokesman from Audi told Automotive News that the recall was found through routine testing, and the automaker is not aware of any accidents or injuries related to the defect. Gosh. Yeah, I was going to say, what a waste of money that is. That is. 
All right. Well, uh, that's it. We've got to have more news headlines in the next uh, couple of hours of a show, so I invite you to stay tuned for that. In Wheel Time continues after this quick pit stop. Stay with us. Texas Truck Works is your go-to truck customizer. From mild-to-wild lift kits, custom wheels and steering and handling enhancements to the best personal and commercial wraps, Texas Truck Works delivers. Let Texas Truck Works founder Scott Stevens help you get the most out of your truck or Jeep. Texas Truck Works has decades of customizing experience including power adders and complete engine swaps. Let the Texas Truck Works team design an upgrade plan that fits your budget. Get truck attitude today at texastruckworks.com. 